Hello everyone, it's Olumayowa Victor Ogunshola for you again. And today I have something very interesting in the field of business management for every one of us. So are you an entrepreneur and you've got one, two, three members of staff in your small organization? Or are you a manager in a bigger organization? Or you are the head of department in a very big organization and you have some staffs under you? This is very this topic we have for you today will be very useful. Also, if you are a university student in any way around the world, today's video would be very useful for you as long as you are a student studying business management. So what do we have for us today? Today we will be looking at the topic employee performance management, as you can see, employee performance management. So we are going to be looking at how do we improve the performance of our employees at work and how do we motivate our employees at work. Using the word motiv motivation, let me be very clear that today's video would focus on performance of employees. Of course, how to motivate employees as well, but I should use this opportunity to inform us that there's a separate video on YouTube where I talk about motivational theories. I talked about motivational theories, for example, Douglas McGregor's theory X and Y. I talked about Esbeck's uh, two-factor theory of motivation and hygiene factors. In that uh, motivational theory video, I talked about Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I talked about Macobi's 4R, the R of reward, relationship, uh, reason, and uh, responsibilities. So there is a separate video on YouTube where I talk about motivational theories in details. But today we are looking at performance management as managers in different organizations, how can we manage the performance of our employees? If you come with me to the whiteboard, we do justice to this uh, right now. So if you look at the whiteboard, today we are going to be talking about regular review. So regular review is one way that we can uh, improve performance uh, of our employees. Regular feedback from employees, job redesign strategies of job enlargement, job enrichment and job rotation, continuous professional development. When last did you send an employee on CPD? That's what we're going to be talking about as well today. We put in one theory and that's McGregor's theory X and Y. I'll talk about that briefly as well today. And lastly, I will talk about delegation. So these are the topics I would cover when it comes to employee performance management. Please enjoy as I start with the first uh, point on the whiteboard. Thank you. So the first point would be regular review. When I talk about regular review, I am talking about uh, reviewing the performance of employees on a regular basis. When I use the word regular, it could be uh, twice a year. It could be three times a year, which is every four months, and it could be four times a year, which is every three months. So as a manager of a department or as the owner of your business, from time to time, you have to review uh, the performance of your employees. And when you are reviewing the performance of employees, what are you looking at? You're looking at two things. You are looking at the strengths of the employees so that you can tell them their strengths and say, you're good at A, you're good at B, you're good at C, and then you're also going to tell them the areas where they need to improve on. So I'm going to write that down, okay? So regular review, you're looking at strengths strengths of the employee and then you're looking at the areas for areas for improvement and by this you are already uh, managing the performance of that particular employee so let's look at that in detail so you sit down this particular employee say a patrick or a jane and you say ah jane the following are your strengths that we have noticed over time you're good with time management that's very good you are able to deliver on time that's still part of time management so a major strength of yours is time management and one thing that we really like about what you've been doing so far is that you are very good with customer service so you keep our customers happy and uh, every complaint that has come from, from from our customers has been 
handled effectively by you and the customers have, have always given positive feedback about you. Those are two strengths that you've given to Jane. Then you say, however, we think that you need to improve on these particular areas. It could be that uh, uh, Jane uh, uh, postpones work, okay? So it could be that she's effective at what she does, but she postpones work a lot. So perhaps you need to deliver work more on time and stop postponement of work. And if it is probably that you are postponing work because you do not understand the particular task, could you speak to me as your manager and get some help rather than postponing work? And this would be some kind of review, okay, with Jane. And this review, like I said, could be done uh, twice a year, three times a year, it will depend on the organization. And let me also seize this opportunity to remind us that when we talk about regular review, it could be from the from the manager to the employee, okay? So that is uh, from management to member of staff, and it could also be a peer review. So regular review, I'm gonna clean that up, please. Regular review, Regular review could be uh, in form of uh, management to employee, okay? Or that is one, it could be in that form, or could, it could be in the form of a peer review. It could be in form of a peer review. So peer to peer. Okay, so that's uh, one uh, uh, th topic we'd like to talk about today on uh, employee performance management. Regular review could be done uh, twice a year, three times a year, or four times a year, and could be from management to the employee, could be from peer to peer, but must outline the major strengths of the employee and the areas for improvement of the employee. Thank you very much. Remember, you can always rewind the video to listen again to something that wasn't clear to you. <clears throat> so the next uh, performance uh, management uh, skill that we're going to talk about, concept rather, <clears throat> that we're going to talk about now is feedback. Okay, so you should give regular feedback to employees at work. Giving regular feedback to employees at work. And when we give feedback to employees at work, we should be careful because feedback is not meant to demotivate the employees. Feedback is rather meant to motivate employees and is rather meant to help employees improve in their operations. So when you give feedback to an employee at work, your feedback should motivate that employee, your feedback should help that employee improve in the particular uh, operations that they carry out in that organization. So how do you give feedback to employees? It's about the sandwich approach. The sandwich approach where you have the positive, you start with the positives, <coughs> Then you embed the uh, areas for improvement. Areas for improvement. And then you end it with a positive. I don't like to use the word negative. That's why I say areas for improvement. So let's do a practical approach of, of this kind of feedback. So there is a certain member of staff called Johnny. And I give feedback to Johnny. Hey, hello, Johnny. How are you today? We so much love the energy that you bring to this organization. We love your inner, inner, innovative energy. We like the new ideas you bring on board. We love this, and this is good for our organization. However, Johnny, I've heard that you don't deliver uh, your deliverables on time. Johnny, this is something you need to work on because if you don't deliver on time, it's costing us money as a company. You really have to work on this journey. So well done again. We love your energy. We love your creativity. 
Keep bringing up the creativity ideas, and I trust you work on uh, delivering on time. Okay, and that's an example of giving feedback to a member of staff. We started in that example with telling Johnny how we appreciate his innovativeness and how we appreciate appreciate bringing is bringing of new ideas into the organization. Then we went on to tell Johnny what he needs to improve and that Johnny needs to improve uh, in terms of delivery, okay? He needs to improve in terms of delivery time. That was clear in that feedback and then we went on to say we love his creativity. Positive uh, areas for improvement, positive. That's how to give feedback to the employees. If you give feedback to the employees appropriately, if you give effective feedback to your employees, then you are looking to increase the performance of your employees at work. You are looking to motivate your employees at work. Thank you very much. We go to the next uh, thing over there. <coughs> now we are going to talk about job redesign strategy. Job redesign strategy. And the job redesign strategy is simply telling us how we can redesign the job role or the job description of an employee with respect to the scope of the work and the depth of the work that that employee does within the organization. So with job redesign strategy, we, we are coming up with this concept so that we can motivate the employee. We are coming up with this concept so that we can improve the performance of the employee at work. Okay, with respect to what he does at work, with respect to the depth of what he or she does at work. And how can we redesign the job of an employee at work? These are the concepts of job enlargement, job enrichment, and job rotation. Let's make it colorful now. Job redesign strategy, we have a job Enlargement. Okay. And we have job enrichment. And we have job rotation. So these are three different ways where we can redesign the job of an employee and at work in order to motivate the employee and in order to improve the performance of the employee. So let's start with job enlargement. Talking about job enlargement, we are only increasing the task of the employee in the particular job role. I'd like to say that again. Talking about job enlargement, we are not changing the task of the employee, but what we are doing is we are increasing the task of the employee in a particular job role. I'll just put that down now, yeah? We increase the task of the employee in a particular job role. Why? Why do we want to increase the task of the employee? Why? Could be that the employee is bored. Could be that the employee is already complaining about monotony of work. But when the task of the employee is increased, the employee becomes more challenged, has more to do. There's reduction of boredom. There's reduction of monotony of work. Okay? So, I can put it out there. Uh, eliminates, eliminates monotony of work. So it helps to kick away boredom. So an employee has a particular task that they should do for six hours, but the employee is so good in this job that they do it already in three hours. So for the next three hours, they have nothing to do. They are bored, they are laid back. By the time that you increase the task of that employee in that particular job role, then they are going to be working for six hours and not three hours. Thank you very much. Now we go to job enrichment. Job enrichment is different from job enlargement. 
because when we talk about job enrichment, we are actually uh, increasing the task of the employees and we are giving the employees new responsibilities and new authorities. Okay, job enrichment, yeah, we increase the task of the employee. But we increase the task of the employee, okay, across uh, different uh, functions of the organization, job enrichment. Increase the task of the employee across various functions of the organization, okay? And when we do this, yeah, we must make sure that the employee has the skills, the knowledge, and abilities to carry out such functions. Eh? So we must make sure that the employee has the skills. If the employee does not have the skill and you move them from marketing to customer service, then there is a problem. So when you talk about job enrichment, adding new tasks to the employee's uh, uh, job roles or job description, Please ensure that they have the right skills, they have the right abilities, and they have the right knowledge. Skills, abilities, and uh, knowledge. Okay? And this could be very rewarding for the employee because the employee is highly motivated. The employee is highly uh, motivated. Thank you very much. And then we look at the last one there, which is job rotation. And when we talk about job rotation, it simply means that we move the employee for us from one department in the organization to another. So job rotation, moving employees from one department to another. For example, Sarah works in marketing and Michael works in customer service. Then you bring Sarah from marketing to customer service and you take Michael from customer service to marketing. And then this gives the employees uh, opportunities to get gain new skills. They gain new skills. This gives the uh, employees opportunity to see the organization from a different perspective. This gives the uh, employees opportunity to learn something new. Okay? So, uh, move employees yeah around uh, different departments in the organization on a temporary basis so when we talk about job rotation it's not permanent it's on a temporary basis you move employees to different departments within the organization on a temporary basis. Move employees around different departments in the organization on a temporal, on a temporary basis. Yeah? And this means they can gain, gain new ideas. Yeah? This means that they can uh, have uh, uh, different perception of the uh, organization okay so they can see the organization from different perspective okay see the organization see the organization from different perspective okay and also they can actually see what their colleagues do isn't it so by the time you move uh, 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 staff A from customer service to marketing, when he or she gets to marketing, you can say, wow, so this is what these guys have, at marketing have been doing. I thought they had an easy job. So now I know better that they don't have an easy job and they are a valuable department to the organization. And the staff from marketing goes to customer service and say, wow, so without these guys, we would not have customers. Wow, they are really doing a good job. So this is, this, this is job redesign strategy of job enlargement where you increase the task, nothing new, the same task, but it is increased in order to save the, to, 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 to save the employee from being bored. 
job enrichment, you increase the tasks across different departments of the organization. When you do this, please ensure that the employee has the right skills, right abilities, and right knowledge. Job rotation. This is to motivate the employee. This is to improve the performance of the employee. When you do this, employees will gain new ideas. Employees will see the organization from different perspectives and employees will appreciate what other departments in the organizations uh, do. Thank you very much. And that was job redesign uh, strategy touched. We would go to something uh, different now. And that would be um, CPD. And CPD will be continuous professional development. Continuous professional development, CPD. CPD. That is continuous professional. development okay remember we are talking about improving performance of employee employee performance management how to manage performance of employee how to improve performance of employee remember we are also talking about motivating employees the best way to one of the best ways to improve performance of employees at work is to make sure that employees regularly are sent on a CPD program so CPD could be in the form of uh, a workshop. It could be in the form of a conference. It could be in the form of a training, training program. It could be in the form of a, a, sh a short course. Sometimes it could be in the form of a long, or uh, it could also be in the form of a long, long, yeah, a long course, long, longer course, even maybe IE, maybe a university degree or something, university uh, degree. Okay, and these are different forms. Some, some of the forms of CPDs that we have. You are a manager in that international organization. You are a manager in that big organization. You are a manager in that small organization. When last did you yourself attend a CPD program? When last did you send an employee on a CPD program? Now, don't tell me, oh, but there is no money for that. There are lots of uh, free CPD workshops around the world now. There are lots of even online free CPD workshops. You have to search for them and you would get the relevant CPD workshop. One thing I must make clear is that when you send an employee for CPD workshop, make sure that it's the relevant CPD workshop, okay? So if someone needs time management skills, you need to look for a time management workshop and you send them for that workshop. If you want a particular employee to manage product projects, more effectively, you need to look for a project management workshop or conference and send that employee to that project management training program, conference or workshop. So please, continuous professional development, CPD, is very important when we talk about employee performance management. And how, how, how do you know the right CPD to send your employee on? Remember our first point, which was about reviewing the uh, uh, regular review. So if you have a regular review with the employee, if you, if you rewind this video, <coughs> you will see that I talked about reviewing the employee, you talk about the strengths of the employee and the areas for improvement of the employee. So once you identify the areas for improvement of the employee, then you need to send your employee on a workshop or conference or training program or a short course that will help that employee to gain knowledge and skills so that that areas for improvement is indeed improved and it becomes a strength. So CPD there for you would improve employee performance. Thank you very much. We go to the next one, which is a bit of a theory, and that is Douglas McGregor's theory X and Y. 
Douglas McGregor's theory X and Y. Douglas McGregor's theory X and Y. Douglas McGregor's theory X and Y. Mac Gregor's theory X and pardon me please theory X and why? From Douglas McGregor. And this theory can also help to improve employee performance. This theory can also help to motivate employees at work. McGregor says, states that or proposes that the theory X workers are kind of lazy workers. Lazy workers who don't like to work. Lazy workers who don't like to work. They never meet the targets, they never meet the deadlines, they come late to work. So Douglas McGregor says you want to improve the performance from such employees, you have to be coercive towards them. If you look at one of my YouTube videos, I talk about power and uh, uh, motivation. So there are different kinds of power that you have as a manager. One of such powers is uh, coercive power. This is from French and Raven, coercive power. So, for this kind of managers, McGregor actually suggests that you kick them in the ass. Kick them in the ass using your coercive power, okay? Coercive power. Which means you punish them, okay? You punish, punish them. And once you punish them, then, oh, now I get a punishment, I get a suspension, I'm losing money, some of my salary is gone. Then they begin to sit upright and then their performance begins to improve. On the other hand, we have the cherry white kind of workers. These guys love work, okay? They love, they love work, okay? They meet targets at work. With these kind of workers, McGregor suggests that we use the kind of power called reward power. So as a manager, you have got coercive power, you have got reward power, okay? You've got legitimate power, you've got reference power, and you've got expert power. But now we are just talking about coercive power and reward power. Reward power. So for these kind of workers, they already love work, they meet targets at work, you reward them, okay? How can you reward them? Maybe promotion? How can you reward them? Maybe increase in pay? How can you reward them? Maybe you give them uh, uh, gift cards. Gift cards. How can you reward them? Maybe holidays. Okay? And this will improve the performance of such employees. This will motivate such employees at work. Okay, and that's Douglas McGregor's theory, X and Y. And uh, very quickly, we talk about the last point of today. We talk about the last point of today's topic, which is employee performance management. And the last point of today is delegation. 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 So, are you a manager of a small business or you're a manager in a big organization and you want to improve the performance of your employee and you want to motivate your employee? Do you know that the more you delegate to the cherry white kind of employees, that's employees who are doing well at work, the more such employees will be motivated? So, let's talk about delegation. So, delegation is when yeah, uh, when you transfer, you transfer, yeah, some of your legitimate, legitimate responsibility and authority 
to a particular employee. Delegation, you transfer some of your legitimate responsibility and authority to a particular uh, employee, okay? In order for them to carry out a specific task. But I have to add something. So delegation is when you as a manager transfer some of your legitimate responsibility and authority to a particular employee so that that employee can carry out a specific task. I have to be very clear that when you delegate to an employee, the final accountability of that task or that project lies with you, okay? So I have to state that. The final accountability of this specific task lies with you. So let me give a practical example. Let's say that uh, you are a manager in Samsung in the Netherlands, okay? You know, Samsung, uh, home country for Samsung is South Korea. We all know that, okay? So let's say that you are the manager of Samsung in Amsterdam, Netherlands, and then you work there and you have employees, and you had a strategic meeting with a certain Mr. Chang next week. And that meeting would be next week Friday with Mr. Chang. But just before Friday, you got a telephone call from Seoul, uh, South Korea, that you are needed in the headquarters in Seoul, South Korea for a strategic meeting, which means that you can no longer meet with Mr. Chang. But that meeting with Mr. Chang would have brought the company in Amsterdam, that's a Samsung Amsterdam, it would have brought the company, let's say, uh, $5 million. That's huge, I want to believe. So you cannot abandon the meeting with Mr. Chang, but at the same time, you have to attend the headquarters meeting in Seoul. At this kind of situation, you can delegate this particular specific task of meeting Mr. Chang to a subordinate in your office. So you can delegate this to maybe your next line of staff, the, the one who is after you in the office. And let's say that the one after you in office is the, by the name Maxwell. And you would say, Maxwell, I have to meet Mr. Chang next week, Friday, but also I have just been told that I have to be in Seoul on Thursday for a very strategic meeting. I would love you to attend that meeting with Mr. Chang and seal this meeting of $5 million with Mr. Chang. Maxwell immediately will feel motivated because if it wasn't for that meeting at the headquarters in Seoul, Maxwell would never have the opportunity to be at a meeting with Mr. Chang and seal a deal of $5 million for the company in Amsterdam. So Maxwell is excited, Maxwell is motivated, Maxwell has new energy for work, and that's what delegation can do. However, I repeat, when Maxwell is uh, uh, delegated uh, this particular activity, it means that you have transferred some of your legitimate responsibility and some of your legitimate authority to Maxwell. However, you are responsible, you are accountable for the final outcome of the start. So if the deal goes wrong and Mr. Chang decides not to do business with Samsung Amsterdam again, and Mr. Chang says, I'm no more interested, I call the deal off, and the company loses $5 million, the company cannot hold Maxwell accountable for this. They will still hold you accountable. So when you delegate uh, duties to subordinates at work in order to motivate them, in order to improve their performance, please bear in mind that you will still be held accountable. Okay? The final responsibility, final accountability lies with you. And uh, that's delegation. And with delegation, we come to the end of uh, 
today's uh, short lecture, if it was short, on employee performance management. We talked about regular reviewing of employee performance. How do you review employee performance? It could be done twice a year, three times a year, or four times a year. When you review the performance, you are looking, telling the employee, you're giving feedback to the employee about their strengths, and you're giving them feedback about their areas for improvement. I said, when you give feedback, use the sandwich approach by starting with the positives, then talking about the areas for improvement, then sandwiching it with the positives again. Then we looked at the job redesign strategy of job enlargement, job enrichment, job rotation. With job rotation, we say that you're picking one employee and you're making them have a test of different aspects of the organization. And when you do this, they know more about the organization, they value the organization more, they know more about uh, the challenges and difficulties their uh, uh, colleagues are going through in other departments, and then uh, it motivates them uh, the more. Job enrichment, it means that you give them uh, tasks which will challenge task rather which will challenge them more. Okay, and that's job enrichment. Job enlargement, it means that you increase the particular task they do in order to save them from boredom. And then we talk about CPD. Regular CPD, regular continuous professional development, would be very useful to improve employee performance and to improve employee motivation. Then we talk about Douglas McGregor's theory X and Y, whereby if workers are lazy, we have to punish them. We have to punish them, and that will improve their performance. And we have to punish them, and it will motivate them because they don't want to be punished next time. And we talked about Jerry White kind of workers who like work. For these kind of workers, we have to create a conducive working environment for them, and we have to reward them appropriately. And talking about delegation, you transfer some of your legitimate authority or responsibility to a subordinate for that subordinate to carry out the task. But when you do that, you are still accountable. Thank you very much. And this was today's topic on employee performance management and how we can motivate our employees at work. Thank you very much. You know that I will not go until I talk about my passion. And my passion lies with the African continent. How will Africa develop? How can Africa be united? So are you an African anywhere in the world? Please, let's keep working together for the promotion of African unity and for the development of the African continent. Do you like today's video? Do you have suggestions on how to improve or what to improve in our YouTube videos generally? Please send us an email at Delta Mango Alpha Yankee Oscar Romeo for umbrella at gmail.com. That's the email for you at gmail.com. Thank you very much. We appreciate your feedback. So I'd like to say goodbye now in English language. Thank you. I'd like to say thank you in Dutch language. Thank you all. And from Yoruba language, from Nigeria, West Africa, I say Eshio. Bye.